Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, welcome to today's um, service. Hallelujah. Um, look at the lovely sunshine outside. We bless the Lord for that lovely, lovely, lovely sunshine outside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's take the Bible verse that we want to use to pray. Welcome, Sister Nina. Bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Bless you. All right. So we'll just take our Bible verse that we're going to use to pray, and then we'll get ourselves ready. Great to see all of you. It's going to be. It's going to hit about thirty-two degrees later on in the afternoon. If it's not even already there, 29, 29, 30. Wow, that's really great, great, lovely. All right, so let me bring up the Bible verse and then we will just pray. All right, so here it is, the book of Jude. Can you hear me, please? Can you all hear me loud and clear? Yes, Pastor. Thank you very much, Sahethi, thank you. All right, so this is Jude. Jude is only one chapter. Jude is only one chapter, um, so it's just verse 20. It says that, by you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith. Make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher. How? By praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit is another way of saying speaking or praying in tongues. So he says that when we pray in tongues, a few things happen as we pray in tongues. One, he says, you build yourselves up. You build. The idea of the building is like to build a skyscraper. That is the idea. A very high uprise building, which means that, you know, you tower above every situation or condition. If you were down, it lifts you up. If you were depressed, it lifts you up. If you're worried, it takes you out of that mindset and it's not only that you build yourself like the way they build tall, tall buildings then the next one he says that in that in, in that speaking in tongues you are making progress you know progress is going on it could be something about a situation it could be about a revelation it could be about an insight something that the spirit of god has already deposited in you is building it up in your mind for you to understand so there's progress there's progress in every area of your life. He says like what? Like an edifice. An edifice is another word for building. So he likens our, our, our speaking in terms like somebody, an architect that has a project to build, mm -hmm. to build. On the, on the architect's mind, he knows what he wants to build. He wants to build a hotel. He wants to build a house. He wants to build, you know, any kind of building. But the plan is already there. And then they, they use the plan and they build according to the plan. So which means that there's a plan, a blueprint of all that Christ has done. It's already in us. It, it covers everything in our life. So as we speak in tongues, then those things are being brought out. You know, we begin to realize it and seize it. And that is what we're going to do today. That in today's service, God is still building us in our understanding to let us see things from his perspective and let us know that Everything that we desire is already available. It is just our inability to be able to access it. And that is what the Spirit is helping us to do. Learn how to access it, seize it, catch it, operate it, manifest it. It's what the Spirit of God is trying to let us learn and do with all that is inside. So we're going to do that. We're going to use this as a Bible verse to begin to rise like an edifice rise like that above all situations negatives hallelujah before we just want to sing it so maybe if you're not to sing it among the gods among the gods who is like you glorious in holiness yeah holy praises do in words Hallelujah. Among the gods, among, among the gods, among the gods, who is like you? 
You are glorious in holiness. Yes, Lord. In praises. Do in holiness. Hallelujah. Among the gods. Among the gods. Among the gods. Who is like you? You are glorious in holiness. Yes, oh, in praises. You are doing wonders. Hallelujah. Among the gods. Among the gods. Among the gods. Hallelujah. Who is like you? You are glorious in holiness and cheerful in praises. Do in wonders, hallelujah. Among the gods, and among the gods, among the gods, who is like you? You are glorious in holiness and cheerful in praises. Do
Rekataya Brandaya, Lebrandaya Brasaya, Radaya Brandaya Brasico, Radaya, Lebrecala, Lebrecastaya, Lebala Braya, Lebrasico, Lebrecasaya, Lebrandaya. Brandaya, we build ourselves on our most holy faith, Libraya, Rikastataya, Rebaka Labraya, Lebre Calabayandaya, Lebre Labra, Labra, Radaya. We make progress. 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 We build ourselves, Libraya. We build ourselves, Labaya. We make progress, Libraya. Libra Kayabra. We rise like an edifice, Libraya. Libra Casito Labraya. Labranda Yabrasico Standa. Rekaskata. Rekalaba. Lebra Yabraya. Elebre Calaba. Do Libre Cassette. Ezebe Elebre Castaya. Rekastaya. Rada da Branda. Lebro Calabra. Welcome, Stan Jennifer Lebron de Libra. Welcome. Randy the Brandala, welcome the Brandala, Brother Mike, the Braca Sikula, Ridaya Bandi, the Bros to Kandale Maya, the Braca Stataya We are building ourselves, the Brandaya, according to Jude, the Bra verse 20, the Bra is only one chapter, the Brandaya, the Brandaya, Braca Sataya, the Bra will rise, the Braca about anything, anything. the Braca Sataya. Lebraya, let us pray, let us pray. Pray a profession of your, your spirit and your mind. You have to be receptive. Redaya branda ya braka sataya, redaya branda ya braya, lebre kala branda ya braka sataya, redaya branda ya braka ya, lebre kala branda ya braka ya, redaya braka sataya braya, redaya branda ya braski kataya, redaya braka stika la magete bre, reke stika le branda le lo braya, hala braka stika ya braya, wakam wakam baza mai le branda le stika ya. Ebrenda la branda le brocosa. Ebrenda la branda le brocosa. Ebrenda la branda le brocosa. la 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 Rekasataya, Rebalula, 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 Rebal
Lebra and rising higher and higher and higher and higher. Rababa Saya, Rababa Yala Braya, Rebranda Yabraka Sata, Rekasta, Rebaya Labraya, Rakasataya Labra, Ebrenda Yabrakaya, Lebreka Sataya, Lebreka Sata, Eshebaya Baye, Eshebaya, Eshebaya Baye, Rebeka Saya, Lebreka, Lebreka, Rebaya, 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 Ala La 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 There's a song which I don't know which maybe some of you might know it. I don't know all the words to that song, but I'll sing it anyways, my spirit. I will exalt you, my God and my King. I will praise your name forever. Every day. I will bless your name. I will praise your name for I will, I will exalt you, my God and my King. I will bless your name for Every day I will bless your name. I will praise your name forever. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. Words cannot even quantify when we look at your splendor and we look at your majesty your majestic self. And when we look at the victory that you wrought for us, oh God, in the very announce of the pitchers blackness of hell, that in three days and three nights, which no man could have done, even though it was our fault in Adam, but you look at us and you look to the future, you were trampled down. You were trampled according to Isaiah 53. He said that you were bruised. You were smitten for our iniquities. But the chastisement of our peace was laid upon you. We thank you for that. You commit this whole service into your hands. It is all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. That your name that is glorified will be glorified more and more in our lives. We've not come to any man. We've not come to any woman. We've not come to any system. We are not here just to please anybody, but to acknowledge you as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords in our hearts and in our life. We thank you and we bless you that your name will be glorified. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for utterance. And whatever form of darkness that may be, Father, we dispel it because of your anointing. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And everybody shall say a very resounding and a thunderous, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 
Once again, let me take this opportunity. Good to see all of you. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Um, again, and to this service, thank you very much for the time you've carved out to be here with us, and your life will never be the same as we're going to go into a time of, of praise and worship. And once again, yes, yes, we are involved, but there's no distance in the spirit. We can connect. We can be part of it. There's no distance in the spirit. And just make sure that we give God his honor. Honor. All worship is about honoring God. It's about honoring God. If the Queen of England was supposed to come to your house, you would honor her. You stop whatever you are doing. You stop whatever you are doing. So we don't have to treat God any lesser just because we cannot see him or just because we are not together. Give God your best honor. That, that honor is respect. Respect him as who he is as you go into praise and worship and the rest of the service. All right, so I'm going to turn this over to Lady P for that in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hey, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's a joy to see you once again. Wow. <laughs> Sister Hetty. Wow, you got a nice background, but it's overshadowing you, so we can't really see you properly. Oh, Sister Jennifer, welcome. Welcome, everybody, once again. Yes, yes. It's another week, another beautiful day that the Lord has made. We will always rejoice and be glad in it. Sister Sherry, welcome for the mic. iPhone, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's amazing. For the Randy, you've always hiding behind iPhone. <laughs> Bless you. Thank God for the day. Thank God for the sun. Thank God for the moon. Thank God for everything. Bible says, in all things, give thanks to the Lord. For this is good. And this is your reasonable service. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <laughs> Be, you've charged yourself in the spirit. You pray, reviving yourself, building your most holy faith in the spirit. Now it's about time for us to jump, make noise, shout, and call our neighbors. Let them know what is happening in our lives. Let them know what is happening in our, in our house. If you're you at work and you're in office, let them know that something good is happening to you and you can't just keep it to yourself. I just can't keep it to myself. All I have to do is to shout it to the rooftop and let everybody hear what God has done for me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're going to take one hot, hot, hot song. The weather is hot already. So let's get our hot song and just dance to in glory. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Wow. This is a one African medley. So it's a mixture. It's a mixture. Just shout it. Look at the lyrics and just, just. Praise his name, like David Dance, in an all his just went up. You do the same thing. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you. Oh. Sing my praise unto your mighty Lord, and I will shout and dance to you, for you have been my help from now to ever. Come on! Sing my praise unto you, my Lord. Hey, I will shout and dance to you. For you have been my help of nothing ever. Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. My 
God is good.
Lift your hands and bless them in this place.
Can we lift our hands together one time? My hallelujah belongs to you. Everybody, come on and concert and say it.
in the glory Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've started in our life. For you will perfect that which concerns us, O God. Rabbi we lift up your name high. We give Jesus. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, God, for the cross. We thank you, God, for the resurrection power. That is out to work in us, O God. Yes. Out of the belly of our heart flow yes, rivers, rivers of living water. Yes. We thank you, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Unto you shall the guardy of the people be. We have come because of you, not because Thank of you. man, not because of who we are, but because of you. Thank you, Jesus, for your love, Kabo Sata. Thank you, Jesus, for the covenant, for the blood, Rabbi, that sealed that, Rabbi, that covenant for us, that purchased us, oh God, from the hands of the enemy. We have been translated from the kingdom of darkness and have been transplanted, oh God. We have been, we have been planted in the kingdom of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. We are seated in high places with you. We thank you, Jesus, for today. We thank you, God, for the next session. We thank you, God, as your word is coming. We pray that, Father God, you will back your word with signs and wonders. We pray that, Lord, your word that is sharper than two edges to an old my God. Your word that is medicine to our soul, is medicine to our spirit. Your word does as good, oh God. We thank you, Jesus. And your word became flesh and he dwells among men. And we beheld your glory as of the glory of the Son of Man. We thank you, Jesus, that your word is powerful and sharper than two edged sword. And it's going to pierce to the dividing asunder of our soul. We thank you, Jesus, that Lord, you have exalted yourself. You have exalted your word above yourself. We thank you, Jesus, that we hold on to your word. Your word is everything, and you are your word. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can I have an amen? Amen. 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 Let's give Jesus a hand. Amen. Are you excited? Are you, are you Hallelujah. I am refreshed. In his presence, the goodness of joy. We get refreshed in his presence. I am refreshed. And I amen. get ready to hear the word of God. 
feel comfortable wherever you are. You know what to do. You know what to do, and you know what you do that makes you feel comfortable, that there's no distraction when the word is coming. This is the time that the Lord is going to speak to us. Amen. Grab your notebook and your pen. Have some water, juice, and everything. Calm yourself down and listen to the word of God. Amen. Let's have a separate to the prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. Hallelujah. Praise God. Shall we just pray straight on it? Hallelujah. Father, we say that we are grateful to you. Thank you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. And Father, I claim for everybody under the sound of my voice that through the sharing of your word and the teaching of your word, it will cause us to be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That will cause us to walk according to the rank and file where you've placed us in Christ. That we shall bear fruit in this knowledge. And that will cause us to desire to increase in the knowledge of God. That we shall be strengthened with all might according to the glorious power, which is your glorious power. Pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that we will grasp the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of our understanding will be enlightened. That we may know the work of this calling. You called us to Christ for a reason. The riches of the glory of your inheritance that are already in the saints gathered here. And the exceeding greatness of your power available to us. According to those who believe you, and that power, the magnitude of it was demonstrated when you raised Christ from the dead and made him to sit at your own right hand side. Father, thank you for utterance. Thank you for the anointing. And Father, I take authority over every oppression, secret oppression of the enemy against our minds when it comes to the revelation of God's word. Whether it's in the form of slowness to understand, Dullness of perception, indifference, pride, denominationalism, private personal interpretations that do not conform to the world. We allow the light of Christ to start. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now let us release our faith together by saying these words after me. I believe. I believe. I believe. Let me just hear you say it. I believe. I believe. I believe. Hello. Maybe you've lowered the other aspect. I believe. I believe. I believe. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. I don't struggle. I don't struggle. Don't struggle. To receive the word. To, to receive, receive the, word. the word today, 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 I receive the word. I receive revelation knowledge. I receive, I receive revelation, revelation knowledge. knowledge. I receive. I receive. I receive clarity of understanding. Clarity, clarity of, understanding. of understanding. And I know. And, and I know, know my life will never be the same. My, my life, life will never, life be, the will same. never be the same. Never, never, ever be the same. Never, never be the same. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the name of the living God. Once again, let me welcome everybody. We have a full gospel church international the London branch, Christ Reviewed Center, transforming lives on purpose to this, our live online church service. And I also want to welcome those on Facebook, wherever you are, we say welcome to today's service. 
And once again, I would say that in you being here, let us be attentive to the word of God. Service ought to be like a Bible school. Yes, we will dance, we will jump, we will shout, but the essence is to have understanding of the word of God. Once again, some of the things that I might say might be new to you, new in the sense that you might not be exposed to such analytical, in-depth ability of explaining the word of God, or maybe to the fact that you might not be used to in terms of going line by line, precept by precept. One thing as a believer is that you should never be familiar with the word. There's not come a time in your life you think, I know it, I know it, I know it. You should constantly have a heart of humility to listen to the word. Even if you have heard it 200 times, there's still something that you learn about it. So Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 1, for me, Paul, to repeat the same things for you, he said that it is not grievous, but it is for your own good. Have you noticed that the word of God is always the same? Different books will come and go. Different journals will come and go. Different films will come and go. Different movies will come and go. Different songs will come and go. Different fashions will come and go. But the principles of the word remain the same regardless. Praise God. So once again, I welcome all of you. Thank you very much for taking time out to come to listen to the infallible word of the living God. So let us begin to now take off as we continue our study in God's word concerning the significance of the resurrection. The significance of the resurrection. I like to share my news because I spy the word of God ought to be like a Bible school. So we are dealing with the significance of the resurrection part 70. And please, as usual, take notes, the Bible verses, the bullet points, because the idea of teaching is discipleship, whereby you'll be able to teach others the same, not anything different. So do not be familiar with the way you are in, we are all in learning mode. So what we are saying so far in the significance of the resurrection is that the resurrection brought us something important, something significant. And that is what the Spirit of God is desiring to communicate. So we have already looked at what actually happened behind the scenes to Christ from the cross to the throne after resurrection. We said that Jesus handed all authority to the body of Christ. If you don't take advantage of it, then there is nothing God can do about it. The believer is the one in charge. Satan doesn't want you to know and function in the fact of the resurrection. We said that it is only the epistles that gives us an insight into what happened from the book of Romans to the book of Revelation. Therefore, so far, the believer possesses the fullness of Christ's spirit, which is his authority and rule. The fact that the spirit of God dwells in you is an indication of the fact that you have all of God's power, you have all of God's authority, and I shall come to that in a bit. So Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 to 10, we read about it. We talked about the fact that he says there in the verse 10, and you are in him, made full, and having come to fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and you reach full spiritual stature. That means your spirit, when you are born again, is absolutely perfect. Your spirit has been supplied with everything. And he said, he, Jesus, is the head of all rule and authority of every angelic principality and power, and he dwells in you. So by inference, if Jesus is the head of all rule and authority and every power, then you also are the head of every angelic principality and power. So the word fullness, we said, is a Greek word, pleroma, which implies completeness or the corporate headquarters. Corporate. Everything that Jesus is, God is. Everything that God is, the believer is. Everything the believer is, 
Jesus is. It is a knowing, not a feeling. So Satan doesn't want you to be sure about that. So he said that his modus operandi, his number one strategy is that he uses trials, problems, and temptations to make a nonsense of what you have received in Christ. That is his favorite strategy. However, the Spirit of God wants the believer to know of their superiority over Satan, not as an intellectual knowledge, but as an experiential knowledge that is settled in your mind that Satan is eternally defeated so long as Jesus Christ is concerned. Now we are talking about revelation knowledge or experiential knowledge, not mental ascent. What is mental ascent? Mental ascent is, I know that Bible verse, I agree with it with my mind, I can quote it, but it is not active. Uh, I am not walking in it. I am not operating in it. I am not going by. When it is quoted, I know it. I can recognize it. I can hear it. When you quote it, I can complete it for the pastor. I can complete it for who is preaching. However, when situations come, I fail to dwell on it, focus on it as a reality, as a truth versus the problems. So look at Ephesians typo. It should be Ephesians page here. Yeah. Hallelujah. That should be Ephesians. Okay, great. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 to 21 affirms that. Affirms that. Ephesians chapter 3 Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 19 to 21. That you may really come to know. So he's not talking about just head knowledge. Practically to know and to practice. To know and to practice. Through experience for yourselves. So the experience is it true in your life? Even though it is written are you experiencing it? The love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. So somebody can have an academic knowledge of it, but they are not walking in it. They are not conscious of it that you may be. So if you don't know it to apply it, then this part B will not be true. That you may be filled through all your being and to all the fullness of God. He's not saying that you don't have the fullness of God, but now you are behaving like you don't have the fullness of God. Why? Because you are giving more attention to the problems, to the trials, to the tribulations, than the fact of who you are in Christ. So that you may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body, holy filled, and flooded with God himself. Verse 20. That is when he, he made a statement, which we all know and quote, but he quote it out of context. Now to him, who by in consequence of the action of his power, that word power is energy, that is, that is at work within us, is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, far over and above, all that we dare ask, all that we dare think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, our highest desires, our highest thoughts, our highest hopes, our highest dreams. What is he referring to? He is not talking only about the kind of houses we live in. He is talking about the deposit of the spirit. It means that the resurrection of Jesus in him resurrecting and giving us what we have is the highest gift that the father gave to the believer of himself of himself his spirit that's why i said now unto him that is the subject of the action of god his power that is at work within us 24 7 3 6 5 a year that power is in us is far and above 
elder we dare ask in other words if jesus could spend three days three nights to do what no man can do no angel can do nobody can do in that act vicarious act what is that car to him what is that husband to him what is that wife to him what is that money to him what is that situation what situation can be stronger because money cannot take jesus from the dead car cannot take jesus from the dead houses cannot take jesus from the dead why because in the dead sin is a spiritual problem no man could do it that is what it means here unto him who is able to do far the resurrection above the resurrection beyond our highest prayers resurrection is higher than our highest prayers resurrection is higher than our desires resurrection is higher than our thoughts resurrection is higher than our hopes resurrection is higher than our dreams the spirit of christ in man is higher than your highest prayers the spirit of god in the believer is higher than the highest desires the spirit of god is higher than your highest thoughts the spirit of god is higher than your highest hopes is higher than your dreams That is why he said that you would function in it, not based on intellect, but you will know it for yourself. And how do you know it for yourself? As you take it in, you read the word, you read the word, the washing of the word by the spirit, you read the word, then it cements, it cements, it cements, it cements, it cements. Eventually, your thinking pattern can no longer be like this. No matter the problems and the situations, you have built yourself up so high in this mindset, which is higher than anything, that nothing shall be impossible to you. That's why he said in Isaiah 55, my thoughts are not like your thoughts. My ways are not like your ways. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So whose thoughts will you take? So Satan does not want you to know that. So in Ephesians 2.10, Paul puts it in this way. For we are God's own handiwork. He's talking about the born again man. The word handiwork is the Greek word poema. It means master stroke of art master stroke this is not something that he did anyhow master stroke it means that if god in the physical creation of adam where he created adam took painstaking that's what david meant by i am fearfully and wonderfully made when you look at the human anatomy and the physiognomy and the structure it beggars and boggles the mind that medicine and medical science has taken years to discover but it took god a second to make and breathe into man he said if the human body with all its intricacies is a wonder you have not seen anything yet <laughs> you have not seen anything yet then wait until you see the born again spirit if the human spirit is a wonder set you merveille it is something magnificent. You have not seen anything yet. Wait until one day when, we, when Jesus appears, when we see the born again spirit, it will blow your socks off. But he said, we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. We created in Christ Jesus, born anew. Why? That we may do those good works. Watch, watch. Which God predestined planned beforehand for us how taking parts which he prepared ahead of time what are those parts the facts of what jesus has done which is in your spirit he says that living the good life which he had pre-arranged and made ready for us so from the way paul puts it if you're not very very careful you might not understand from the way paul puts it you might not understand. It means that even though we are born again, it means among believers, they have not seen the value. That is where 
the spirit is putting emphasis. Many are born again for years, but they have not seen the value of the born again man's spirit. And Satan will do everything to belittle that what we have inside us. Satan can use the mouth of the parents and tell you, you are a non-entity. You will never amount to anything. It's Satan using their mouth to bring you down. You use your boss. You use situations. He make you look like you are helpless and hopeless. But the reality is that he has prepared that ahead of time. It was a careful, careful, well garnished development. It's not something that was done on the spur of the moment. Based on that, I want to do with three things that believers are still not aware of. In other words, the born again man, the born again man lacks nothing. So I'm going to go into something here. The born again man lacks nothing. The born again man lacks nothing. Please take note. The born again man lacks nothing. Number one, the believer does not need the spirit. Listen to me carefully. Songs that say, I need thee every hour. No. What? Why? You are, the spirit lives inside you. How can the spirit live inside you and you need him? The spirit, to say that I need means the spirit is absent. To say that I need you means the spirit is absent or the spirit is functionless. But we are indwelled. Romans 8, 9. These are all part of our authority. But Satan will use problems, situations, for you not to know that value. Romans 8, 9. But ye are not in the flesh. You are not. He's talking to the believer. You are not. You are not. But in the spirit. Now, the term in the spirit is a little bit blind to us. The term in the spirit is going to explain in the spirit is the same way as synonymous to you are born again. If so be that the spirit of God does what? That's what? That's what? Dwell in you. So if the spirit of God dwell in you, it means you are in the spirit. We are taught that in the spirit means that I am praying and I, I have positioned myself in some way, you know, that I close my eyes and I control my face somewhere, I am in the spirit. No. Romans 8, 9. Let the word speak. He said, if the spirit of God is in you, then you are in the spirit. That means you are in the realm of the spirit of God. You are in the spirit of God. The spirit of God is inside you. So you don't need the spirit. You don't need his lives with you. Now, he said, now if any man have not, any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Did you see that? So he's talking about the person that has received Christ. Verse 10. And if Christ be in you, the body dead, that is that is in the italics, because of sin, but the spirit life because of righteousness. See that? So in the spirit is another way to say you are born again or you have the spirit of God in you or you have received Jesus. That is the meaning of the word. In the spirit. He goes on. Verse 12, verse 11, that Romans 8. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell, the word dwell means abide. From the word abide, we get the word abode. From the word abode, it means resident, permanent place of residence. So the spirit in you is in you eternally. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. How? By his spirit that dwelleth in you. So you don't need a visit from the spirit. All these are all these are cliches that Satan uses to rob you of your authority in Christ, to make you feel weak. So if you might appear that if you don't do something, then the power will not work. You don't need him every hour. Why? He has come to stay with you forever. You don't need him every hour. Why? He lives at your house address in your body forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Now we have received. Take note. Not going to. 
you have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us. 1 Corinthians 3 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple, and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. 1 Corinthians 6 19. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Look at all the emphasis of Paul. Romans chapter 8, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 6. He talks about in you, in you, in you, in you, in you. He emphasizes so that when situations come, you don't feel that you do not qualify. You are a lesser of a powerhouse. Then 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit without. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be born or free, and have been made, and have been, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. Galatians 3.2. I'm just, I'm just, I need to do this for you to get a clear understanding. So that Satan will not use problems and situations to try and make it look like, you know, um, this one, this believer is stronger than this one. Or I don't think I am blessed. No, 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 no. It's the same spirit that we have. It's, there's nobody having it more than the other. Galatians 3, 2. This only would I learn of you. Receive the, 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 the pastors. Receive in the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Then he said, we have also been sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1.13, in whom you also trusted, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, after you believed, you were, you were, you were, you were sealed. Not going to be sealed. Since the day you received Jesus, sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Paul repeats the same thing in Ephesians 4.30 that you don't need the Spirit. You have the fullness of the Spirit already. You are just not aware. So change your mind. You have everything. But Satan will not allow you to know that. Ephesians 4.30 and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Why? Whereby ye are sealed past tense unto the day of redemption. That day of redemption is the redemption of our physical bodies at the return of Christ. So you have noticed in the, in the book of Ephesians, 1 Corinthians 3, 1 Corinthians 6, Ephesians 4, 1 Corinthians 2, so far that the believer has all of the spirit and you are all in the past tense. So we say you are alive in the spirit. The word alive in the spirit is the same meaning as you have the spirit of God. Galatians chapter 3 verse 3. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit. The word begun in the spirit is not speaking in tongues. The begun in the spirit in context that you have received Jesus. That was what he was talking about. In chapter 1, in verse 6, he said that I am surprised that you are so moving away from him that gave you this life unto another gospel. So he was talking about salvation. So chapter 3 is still a continuation of that. Are you so foolish? Have you begun in the spirit? In the spirit. Begun. Have you begun? Don't let that confuse you. Have you begun means the day you receive Jesus. You began in the spirit. He said, are you now made perfect by the flesh? The same word. So Paul uses in the spirit, began in the spirit, eat by the spirit, in the spirit. All that means the same thing. It means you have all of the fullness of God. Having begun in the spirit, in the spirit, there's no that dress in you, that's what see with the spirit. You live in the spirit. All those words, we live in the spirit, begun in the spirit, in the spirit, means you have all of the spirit of God. Galatians 5, 25. If we live in the spirit, that's it. Let us also walk in the spirit. The walk in the spirit means that that is my abode. That is my environment. That is my, that is my area. I, 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 it is not alien to me. I am in the spirit. It is natural to me. All 
these abilities in the spirit are resident in the believer. First Corinthians 12, 4, not of Bible verses. They are very good for your soul and your spirit. Because I need to bring that emphasis. Because some believers think that, you know, oh yeah, because no, I don't really know, I don't know the problems that are going on, Pastor. You don't know. I see we are, we are limited. You are not limited. 1 Corinthians 12, 4. Now there are diversities of gifts. How? But the same spirit. Verse 5. And there are differences of administrations, but the same law. And there are diversities of operations, but the same God, which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit. Now, so we have dealt with that first one. We've dealt with that first one. So, from today, let that settle in your mind. Don't look at your village. Don't look at your bank account. To use that to determine whether the spirit is alive in you or not. That would be the wrong place to look at. That's what we read earlier in Ephesians. We told that we are his workmanship. A master art of production. In fact, there is no production on planet Earth that can beat that. Whether it is supersonic jets, whether it is the latest Mercedes-Benz Maybach S-Class, whether it is Ferrari, there is nothing. Nothing of creation can be compared to the born-again spirit. That's why he said, we are his workmanship, poema, master stroke of art. Wow, well, that's a place to shout hallelujah. Glory oh, to God. So now you know that you all of the spirit. The next one. The believer does not lack power. The believer does not lack power. There is nothing like, I don't have power today. The power is available always. Whether you feel like it or not, the power of God is at work towards the believer always. And also works in the believer always. Ephesians 1 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Why? So that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened. So you be clear in this thing he's going to talk about. That you may know what is the hope of His calling. Why did He call us unto this relationship? And what the riches of the glory of His inheritance were? Where? Where? In the saints, his inheritance, in the saints, his inheritance, in the saints, his inheritance, in the saints. His inheritance is his spirit himself. Verse 19. And what and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? So he has given you the greatest of his power, his spirit. Ephesians 3 14. For this cause, I bow my knees, Kapodaya, unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. 16. That you grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Where? In the inner man. Where? In the inner man. Where? In your spirit. Why? 17. That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. That you've been rooted and grounded in love, in that understanding, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. 19. And to know the love of Christ, the Spirit of God in you is a demonstration of His love. The Spirit of God in you is the highest demonstration of His love. The Holy Spirit, Holy, 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 Holy Spirit, which is so holy, which under the Old Testament no man could approach. God has given it to you for free. All of it. Which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Then he comes to that. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly about all that we think. Ask how? According to the power that worketh in us. That means if there is any situation that can be bigger than the spirit of God that is in you. That spirit of God was birth, was birth, was birth when Christ.
resurrected from the dead. If there is any situation that can be bigger, better, stronger than that which was given by the birth, by the resurrection, then we can be afraid. So did you notice? Did you notice in tandem with that? He kept on using the word no, 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 K N O W. No, that you may know, 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 that you may know. That means awareness, awareness, awareness. Keep your eye on that. Keep your eye on that. Problem comes, keep your eye on that. Problem comes, keep your eye on that. Tribulations, keep your eye. Troubles, keep your eye. But you know what we do? Troubles, we leave it. Troubles, we leave it. Troubles, we leave that place of knowledge. That place of knowledge that assures us we are even taking our eyes off it. We don't even read it. We don't even look at it for one week, for two weeks, for three weeks. Then when trouble comes, now we want to be reactionary. Then we need to gather, gather and do something. So the believer does not need the spirit. He does not need, I need thee every hour. He has the fullness of the spirit. Number two, the believer has all power. All power. But like riding a bicycle, the more you ride the bicycle, the more you become expert. Somebody say expert. You become expert in it. So when you see of anybody operating in some miracles, it's because that person has developed the consciousness of the power. They are not better than you. They are not better than me. But they have worked with it so much. They are aware of it. They are conscious of it. They are consistently, consistently conscious of it. Every time when trouble comes, the first place they look at is the power. The first place they look at is the spirit. The first place they look at is the promise. Whereas another Christian, when problem comes, they don't look at the spirit. They don't look at the power. They don't look at the word. They look at earthly solutions first. Then, the believer does not need deliverance. All these are areas that Satan will seek to minimize the power through problems. It will make you feel like I've been speaking, but I don't feel it. Why are all these problems crowding on me? Then you are sitting down. It will make you feel like the power is not working. It will make you feel like I think. I need some form of deliverance because the way these problems are going on, I need somebody powerful. Let's watch. The believer does not need deliverance. He has been delivered from the power of darkness into the kingdom of Christ by faith in the gospel since the day you were born again. Colossians 1.13 Who hath past tense? Who hath past tense? Who hath past tense? Delivered us already from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So there's a movement. You did not leave the realm of the power of darkness in percentages. It was an outright outrank complete movement from the dominion of the power of darkness and are translated as into the kingdom. The word kingdom is Basilia, the realm of the rule of God. The kingdom is in the hearts of men. The kingdom of God is in the hearts of men. The kingdom of men are physical buildings and palaces and territories and geographical demarcations. However, in the case of Christ, the kingdom of God is in the hearts of men. The kingdom of men is in geographical locations. The kingdom of God is in the hearts of men. God reigns, rules through the heart of a man that has believed him. That's how that's why I said we are his corporate headquarters, Kabataya. Corporate headquarters. What cannot defeat him cannot defeat me. What cannot happen to him cannot happen to me. Except you do not know. He cannot be broke. I can't be broke. He cannot be poor. It might appear as sin, but my eye is not on the physical. My eye is not on the demand and supply of backless bank. That is not where my eye is. My eye is on this phantomless, endless supply. My God shall supply all that 
you ever need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I am not looking at the earthly system. Yes, I will work in the earthly system, but that is not my only medium. It's not my only avenue. I have the supernatural avenue. It's called the kingdom of God in the hearts of men. So believers who are not conscious of that, Satan will take advantage of them. For some believers, they are believers all right, but all their mind is on earthly systems. They believe earthly systems. They believe their salary source. They believe only that. That is all they see. So that is why it appears the power is not working. Colossians 1.13 Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? You are completely out of that realm. So if you allow it to dominate you, you have given chance. Because of your lack of knowledge of not knowing that you have the spirit, you have the power, you don't need to do us. We have and translated us into the kingdom of yes, sir. Watch. The man in Christ is seated far above all principality, power, dominion, and might, and name that is named. Ephesians 1 verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness? Can you do better than Kataya? That word is Megatos Kataya. Means that Hayabotaya. That means magnitude. It is stronger than atomic bomb. It is stronger than hydrogen bomb. It is stronger than any cosmic powers put together. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? The word power is Megatos. The word greatness, megatos, extent, magnitude. Where, where, where? To us, world. That is a lot that. To us, world. It's for us. To us. But if you don't study the word, you don't, you won't be aware of that. Who believe? You see, he said, it's for us who believe. It's for us who believe. According, now it's going to show us the magnitude or the extent. Or the limit according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. So, what he's saying is that is there any power that can rival bringing somebody who is in Hades? You see how Paul connected it to the resurrection? Is there any power? Tell me, cosmic power, chemical power, there is none. Otherwise, God would have used it. If God wanted to use a toy bomb to blast Jesus out of the earth, we would have used it. But that cannot do their job. That cannot do cosmic power, meteorites. No, no, it cannot, it cannot work. What, what other power? The only power that was able to bring Jesus from spiritual death into life was resurrection power. And the resurrection power. That means that the resurrection power is the highest kind of power in all the three worlds, heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And all of that is inside you. <laughs> that means the power that created planet Earth is not equal to the power of the resurrection. I am a time. You are telling me that, and I look at resort, when I look at creation, rocks, sedimentary rocks. I look at coral reefs. I look at different species. He spoke, oh, he spoke, he spoke, he spoke. But he said that that one is class one. The resurrection power is all of God's power, all of God's might, muzzled together to bring Jesus out from a place where somebody called Satan was champion since Genesis chapter 3. No man could come out of there. Even Abraham, Isaac, Jacob were in hell, right in the bosom of Abraham. Nothing could lift them out. But on the third day, on the morning of the third day, a man called Jesus, he did not do it in the spirit of God. He did not do it with God. He was alone in the power of the second, in the power of the second and the last Adam. Which we wrote in Christ when he 
he raised him from the dead. And sat in that same power. Raised him from the dead. Sat him. <laughs> raised him from the dead. The same man a different power. And sat him at his own right hand. Now the word right hand is blind to us. Because we are thinking of geographical location. But it is not geographical location. It is a figure of speech. I can say that John is my right hand. That means when I am not there, John can operate. It's talking about place of authority, place of power, place of prominence. So at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Now the word places is not in the original. The word places is not in the original. So the better translation is in the heavenly sphere or heavenly domain or heavenly realm or heavenly environment. Now let me shock you here. Let me shock you. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Hey, I don't know if you can handle this. I don't know if you can handle this. I don't know. What is the use of that power sitting down in somewhere in heaven? Haven't you seen all the Bible verses that we read? Wait. Wait, wait, wait. I want you to think with me before I close. Wait, 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 wait. I don't know if you can see this. Wait, wait. He said, in another verse you read, he said, that you might be strengthened with might by his power, by his spirit. That means, wait, another Bible verse. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Right? Right? You remember? Right, remember that, which means the Holy Spirit is equal to the power of God. <laughs> well, are, are you following me? I'm going somewhere with this before I drop the bombshell. Before I drop the bombshell, wait. The Spirit of God is equal to the power of God. The Holy Spirit is actually the very power of God. So when he says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his mind, he's talking about that. Be conscious of his power, which is a spirit in you. How do we know that? It was in that same book, in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, when he said that since the day you believe, you were sealed by the promised Holy Spirit. So he talked about spirit, 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 chapter 1, Ephesians, spirit, chapter 2, chapter 3, spirit, spirit in you. That's all the verses we read. So the spirit of God in a believer is the power of God. The spirit of God in a believer is the might of God. That you might be strengthened by might by his spirit in your inner man. You might be strengthened with might by his spirit where? In your inner man. So the might of the spirit is the Holy Spirit. Your born again spirit. So what? Hey, I don't know if you are ready for this. I don't know if you are ready for this. <laughs> I don't know if you are seeing what I'm coming to now. Which means, so let's look at this verse 20. Look at, let's do some work on the verse 20. Which he wrought in Christ. He's showing us the magnitude of his power in the believer. When he raised him from the dead, watch him, and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. The word places is not in the manuscript. That is why you can see it on my screen. It is in italics. It means that translators put it there for clarity purposes. But that is not what it means. It means a realm of the immaterial that human beings cannot touch. Now, if it says that made him to sit at his right hand, right hand is place of authority, right hand is place of power. Who is the power of God? The Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit? In the believer. So the right hand is the believer. <laughs> Glory! The right hand is the believer. Oh, you are the right hand of God. Don't you know that? You are the right hand. You are the right hand of God. Even the Old Testament people knew a little bit about it. It's the call, they said Israel was the apple of God's eye. If you touch Israel, you touch God. 
But there's a better translation. That is it. His own purchased right hand is the believer. It's you. It's me. Hey! Take a boat, You are God's right hand. You are in the place where God sits. He said, which he wrote in Christ. Where is Christ? In me. When he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his own right hand. So the heavenly realm is the spirit of the born again believer. Ephesians 2 6 said the same thing. And has raised us up and made us sit together. Where? In Christ. Where? In the heavenly realm. Where is the heavenly realm? In Christ. Where is Christ? The believer. So the heavenly realm is not a geographical location which is called heaven. The heavenly realm is referring here in context. Here, here. I'm talking about this verse. This verse here in this context is referring to the born again believer. You and me. So where are you at verse 21? <laughs> because you are in that place far Glory to God. Hey, that's why I said, I don't care where they take your name to. I don't care. I don't care where they take your name to. All principality. Hey, hey, hey. whether it is stupid, <laughs> whether it is whatever, I grant that. Whatever it is, whatever. You don't have to be worried about that. Sleep, sleep, sleep. If they tell you that, hey, I saw your picture somewhere. Oh, I am far about. Do your best shot. Give your best shot. I'm far about. Oh, did you say some uh, principality? These are these are beings, celestial beings. And power. Huh? He said that my 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 friend father is the manager of something, something, something. He's the one who's in charge. I am superior to him, but I respect him. <laughs> and might and dominion. Look at the words. Look at the words. Uh, uh -huh. that's, where, that's where you see, though. You see, but once again, you need to be reading it to be conscious. You cannot hear this like this and then forget. Then one week you are not, you are not in there. You forget. So Satan will take you from the wrong side. Then you are forgetting you even read this on Sunday. And Satan can make you very busy. Can make you very busy. Because he doesn't want you to know this. So that you become reactionary, not enforcer. And every name that is named, not only in this world, but in that which is to come. Verse 22. Look at look at look at what he said. And hath not going to hath. He has done it already. That's why I said it is not about Christ going to do anything. You have to enforce it. Hath already put all. Not did he say so? All things. Under his feet, we are his body. Where his body is, his feet is. Where his head is, his body is. Where his feet is, the body is. Where his legs are, we are. You cannot see my leg here and my body here. You cannot see my head here and my body here. I am here. Every component of my body is here with me. We move together. If it moves, I move. If it stop, I stop. If it's an overcomer, I'm an overcomer. If it's rich, I am rich. What cannot happen to you cannot happen to me. If it cannot fail, I cannot fail. If they cannot defeat Jesus, they cannot defeat me. It might appear like, but that is where your knowledge and engaging it becomes very important because appearances can be deceptive. I said appearances. If you don't train yourself to look away from the appearances, the deceptive appearances, you could miss it. And I put all things under his feet and gave him to me head, 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 head over all things. You are the head over all things. I am the head over all things. Are you exercising it? I am the head over all things. You are the head over all things. Over all. To the church. Hey, look at verse 23. <laughs> oh, this is too beautiful. Look at verse 23. The church is what? The church is what? The church is what? His body. Uh, uh, are we limited? The fullness, the pleroma, the fullness. We don't like anything. It might appear like you are lacking something. It might appear like your bank account is lacking something. It might appear like you are not being seen. 
It might appear like there's nothing happening. However, regardless of that, look to the spirit, not to the flesh. Look to the spiritual facts of the spirit, the fullness. You are full. You are fully supplied. You are fully supplied. You don't lack anything. Money doesn't mean you lack. He said, the fullness of him that filleth all and Yeah? Yeah? Let me conclude with, so I'll continue with this next week. But let me show you something. Let me show you something I conclude with it. Let me show you something. Let me, see, let me show you a simple example of somebody. So when a situation comes, what do you do? You just take authority. I showed you that, I showed you that last week. All we need to do is to say this. Like, I talked to, talk to you about penetrating. All we need to do is to say this. If something worrying your finances, you foul spirit of you foul spirit of poverty that is operating and manifesting itself in my life, intimidating me, harassing me, deterring me. I command you to stop in your operations against me. That's all. That's all. What else is it? Uh, is, it your, is, it, is it your boss? It's not him. There's a spirit behind your boss. So you just take authority. You foul spirit that is operating in the mind of my boss to turn him against me, to harass me, to intimidate me, to deter me. I command you to stop in your operations. That's all. Simple. Uh, or is it your family members? Is it your family members? There. Uh, you simply say, I command you to cease and desist in your maneuvers in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Based on what you have just learned, you have the spirit, you have, you have, you have been delivered, you have all of his power. I command you to cease and desist in your maneuvers. That's all. That's what can I take and ask him? Is that all I have to do? I thought perhaps I would have to prepare myself and get ready for some big battle. And he said, sometimes because of our religious teaching, we think we have to pray for a week before we can exercise our authority over the devil. No! Or we think maybe we ought to fast several meals before we could attempt to deal with the devil. No! But our authority over the devil is in the name of Jesus, based on our rights and privileges in Christ. The right of the fact that the spirit lives in us. We have been delivered from darkness. We have all of his power. Now let me conclude quickly end with something. Let me end with this one. Because this is where I can see many believers, they don't understand. I've said all this beautifully. But Satan wants the physical activities to be taken the way you respond. So this is what you need to learn to do. Learn to do this. After you have prayed, or you are believing God for something. I don't know what you are believing God for. Take your eyes off the physical to determine if God, God's authority is working or not. Do stop doing that. So let me show you. A problem comes. When the problem came, the Bible says that if the enemies are coming like a flood, that is the way he likes to come in. He likes to come in in some quick way as if he's, you are being finished. Why? To disarm you. Because when the problem came, you are all over the place. You forgot Bible verses. You forgot it. So now look at what you are doing. You took up a phone and started calling your friends. You didn't even speak in tongues. You didn't even pray. You started calling your friends like that. Or you are all over the place trying to sort it out. Then they ask, oh, what's happening? Oh, I've got this problem. I'm solving. Day one, one week, two weeks. You did not even pray. You go and run, 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 Come and sit me. Then you keep on saying, pee, 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 pee. You are not praying. You see that? You are taking your eyes off who you are. So now, it, doesn't, it appears like there is no solution. You are not looking to the word. Even at that point, when you know you want know to come to church. That's why I said, I made that mistake. When problem comes, people don't want to come to church. They rather run away from God. Instead of God, that is the time to engage. He has insight in that problem that you have. 
We have some insight. We have some insight. We have some insight. I tell you, you'll be praying in tongues. You might not even last for 15 minutes. And an answer, a solution, an answer, a solution will come. That will take you out of that problem forever. But rather, you don't want to pray. And sometimes we are even angry against God. So watch, I'll give you one example. Let me go, I'll, I'll, I'll read this one next week, but let me let me let, let me show you something here. I want to show you something here that happened to somebody. Let me go to that place quickly, quickly, quickly. Yeah, let's go to second kings. And I'll end with that. The realm of what we have in Christ, what I've just discussed. Is far more real than what Satan is trying to use to distract you with. So look at this story here. Second Kings 6, 8 to 20. I'm not read all. Let me just read some. Just even in the Old Testament. An Old Testament prophet was more confident and knew better than many born again Christians with all the spirit living in them. And an Old Testament person, Jesus had not come to die. The spirit is not in them. They don't speak in tongues. The sin was not paid for. Look at what happened. Second Kings 6, 8 to 22. I'll not read all. I'll close. When the king of Syria was warring against Israel, after counseling his servant, he said, in such and such a place shall be my come. Then the man of God sent, follow me carefully here, sent to the king of Israel, saying, beware, that you pass not such a place, for the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent to the place on which Elisha told and warned him, and thus he protected and saved himself repeatedly. Therefore, the mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled by this thing. He called his servants, watch, and said, Will you show me who of us is for the king of Israel? One of the servants said, None, my lord, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchamber. Oh! Oh! The king of Israel was worried that. When I, when I draw my, my, my military strategy, then all my plans are exposed. So he's asking his people, who among you has been leaking information? They say, King, it's not us. Who. There is a prophet called Elisha that to the point that the words that you speak in your bedroom, the man hears it. <laughs> so the king got angry and sent a battalion to go and arrest Elisha. Look at what happened. So Elisha was in his house. Watch. I want you to see something. Then we close with it. So the Syrian king sent the look, look, look. What? One man, look. one man, one man, one man, one man, one man. Just to, just to arrest one man. They sent horses, <laughs> chariots, <laughs> great army. No, and they didn't even go in the day. They waited when the man is going to sleep. They came by night. And surrounded the city, one man. But watch, verse fifteen. So the army and the chariots and the horses they laid wait throughout the whole night to take Elisha of God. Verse fifteen. But when the servant of the man of God, the man is called Gehazi, or Gehazi, rose early and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots round about the city. Look at what happened. Elijah's servant said to him, he went back to Elijah, alas, my master, what shall we do? Like many of us, many of us, when problem comes, well, this guy is a servant. He doesn't know about authority. Problem comes, oh, hey, what am I going to do? I'm finished. I'm finished. Watch. Look at Elijah. Look at verse 16. Look at verse 16. Look at the man. This man is not born again. Has he got the spirit of God? Does not speak in tongues. Jesus has not come. Elisha answered, and fear not. Huh? I mean, chariots, horses. It is worse than, and you only one letter. Eh? One red letter. One, I have better tire. One red letter. You are all over the place. Or your boss will tell you, we shall see where power lies. You are shaking. Look at him. This one is not, it's not one boss. It is a whole army. Look at what he said. For those with us, Hey, are more than those with them. Where was his eye? His eye was on the limitless supernatural realm of God. The servant was on the physical. Two people that had the power of God available for them. Look 
à verset 18. Then Elisha prayed. He said, Lord, I pray you, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. The realm of the invisible is more active than the realm of the physical. And he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha, physical army against spiritual army. Elisha's eye was on the spirit, the thing that he believed in. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. He knew that he didn't panic. He knew that what he had is superior to the army. Mm. Let me leave that side and let me end. Come on, Tabaya. So where is your focus? If you don't learn to do these things now, when in situations, to be conscious of what you have is superior to anything. Here is an unbeliever having confidence in God and yet us with all that Jesus has done. One small problem, we are all over the place. All over the place. All over the place. We cannot even focus. We cannot even function. Those that are with us. Let me borrow Elisha's words. Not even those that are with us. The thing that we have inside us is more than whatever is in the world. It's all entirely up to you. Which one would you choose to believe? Whose report will you believe? Would you believe the report of the world and the problems? Will you put your mind on that? Than that you have in Christ. So it's not that God hasn't answered. It's our inability to function in what we have received. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Glory to God. Let us just pray for a few minutes. Libra has a tire. Those that are with us, what we have in Christ, hey, it's far superior. Today, they might be laughing at you. Libra has a tire. the <laughs> Thank 
after knowing who you are in Christ, the next important thing is to know how to use your authority. Grow in that area. Because there might be days that I might not be there. There might be days that Sister Jennifer might not be there. There might be days you might go to places where nobody of the body of Christ will be there. It will be only you. But know that with you and Jesus, you form a majority. With you mm. and the indwelling of the Spirit, you form mm. a majority. Learn that. Mm. Know that. Apply that. Be conscious of that. Always. Mm. Always. As you might go. Life journeys will take you to places where you cannot depend on man anymore. Where the systems mm. of men will fail you. Where things will fail you. But there's only one thing that is permanent. The spirit of God in a man is the power of God. It is always dependable. It's something that when we step out on, it's dependable and unbreakable. So you must learn that from now. Don't wait. Learn it. If anything is going on wrong in your life, take authority. Expel it out. Believe it. If the thing is proving stubborn, keep on. Don't accept defeat. Mm. I said don't accept defeat. Mm. Learn that from today. Always. Always. The moment something is abnormal, don't sit down and entertain it and tolerate it. Deal with it instantly. Learn to grow in that area. So you, you also become my yes to master skill. Satan will know that, that this one, he or she, she's not joking. Now, at every small win, you are depressed. Any small win, you are depressed. Any small, no, you have to enforce. You are not fighting. You are already, you are already victorious, but he's trying to make mm. it look like that. So be conscious, conscious, conscious. Always in the name of Jesus. We'll continue next week. Amen. Why don't we do that? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you. Bless you, Sister Jennifer. Thank you very much for that. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, shout back. I see you've been, you've been, you've been, you've been. What is it? Reborn. You've been reborn. Born again. Born again. Born again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. That's it. Back at home, we have we have a we have the um saying, you know, like a greetings. When we meet each other or when we are at church and somebody comes to stand like I'm standing, we shout sons of God. But when I say sons of God, we say much for it. Then when I say victory. Then you say through the blood of Jesus. So, sons of God, march, march forward. forward. Victory through, through the, the blood, blood of Jesus. Jesus. Victory through, through the, the blood, blood, of blood of Jesus. Jesus. Oh, yes. When you say sons of God, march forward. It means that you know you are always advancing. You are always advancing. You are not marking time. You are not allowing troubles like you just head away. You are not allowing troubles and situations. To hold you bound, to let you just, you know, be stagnant where you are, you know, like water, you know, sitting one place, there's no outlet for it to flow. But, sons of God, you have to march forward, you have to just break through every barrier that stands in front of you. Amen. 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 What's the word? What a blessing. What a blessing. Some people are hungry. Some people are hungry. Don't worry. We'll, we'll finish. We'll be going to have your people in your bunker and everything. I'm waiting for my people anyway. Sons of God, march, march forward. forward. Teach me through the blood of Jesus. What a way. What a blessing. What a blessing. That's just the truth. The blessing is just the truth. Amen. Mm. Wow, what a powerful way. We thank God for this assurance of this word. 
you know, we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. he that is in the world. We are more than conquerors. Hallelujah. Yes, we are. Christ, Amen. Okay. And he made us more than the conqueror. Hallelujah. We Amen. reign with him. We are seated in high places with him. He has put everything under our feet. Just like Christ, everything has, has been put under Christ's feet. And because we are his body and he is the head, where the body is, where the head is, the body is there. Where you are seated, you have your, your whole body in peace. So the same thing. Since we are the body of Christ, wherever Christ is seated, in the right hand there, we are also seated there. Amen. It's a matter of knowledge. When you have this knowledge, you can overcome. Amen. Troubles may endure for a short time, but what? Victory and joy is forever. Hallelujah. Victory is ours. Amen. Thank God for his word. That is powerful. This word is able to keep you, to sustain you through every situation. Amen. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that they will not come. Oh, yes, we are in the flesh. So troubles will come. Troubles will come. Things will come against us. But hey, nay, behold, I am with you always to the end. Amen. Wow, wow. It's time for us to give our offerings. Hallelujah. We thank God, you know, that we give you this opportunity to partner with us. Always. We will not let this, this part go without hearing. We come, we pray. We worship, we praise, we hear the word of God, and then we use this time also to give back to the Lord. God has blessed us in every area of our lives. You know, so whatever substance that you have in your hand, yours is to give back to the Lord. God is not asking you to give him all. He says, give back to him. Willingly, willingly, you know, cheerful. God loves a cheerful giver. So this is our, our platform. This is a platform we use in, in sending off our offering. Some of you know knows already. Those who don't know, or if you are on Facebook and you just come across us, we give you an opportunity to partner with us. If you believe that this word is season, you believe in this the anointing of this ministry, if you believe that we are doing God's work, as God has called us to do, we are doing his work, and you, part, you want to partner with us, yes, why not? We give you this opportunity. And we use PayPal. So download the PayPal app. You just sign up with your video. With your, with your, with your name and just your email, and then you'll be ready to go. And you can send your offering to us. Hallelujah. You are partnering with us. You are believing in the work that God has entrusted us to do. Amen. So it's FGCI London. PayPal, www.paypal.me slash FGCI London. You can screenshot it. And we want to say thank you to those who have been sending their offering. We say God bless you so much. You believe in what we're doing, and you believe in backing the work of the work of God. God bless you so much, you know, as he continues to supply, you see, and you are also faithful to give back to the Lord what he has given you. Amen. May you flourish. May you reign in the name of Jesus. May the hands, may the works of your hands be blessed. I thank you, Jesus, that as people are partnering with us and they decided to give to us, we pray that, Lord, you will increase them in every area of their life. Continue to supply them with the seed. And Lord, as they sow into this fertile ground, my God, I pray that Lord, it will grow in the name of Jesus Christ. And the offshoot, oh God, will be, will be evident and people will see it and they will give glory to you. Bless their going out and bless their coming in. In the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you, God. Bless those who haven't got, those who are not able to give. Father, I pray that Lord, as you supply them, Holy Spirit, remind them that Father, you are giving them an opportunity to give back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 What a Sunday. Amen. Facebook, thank you very much for staying with us. Please share our page. Invite people to join us. We are here every Sunday at 2.30 to around this time, 2.30 to 4.30. So, you know, join us. Always invite people. Share our link when you see this video. God bless you so much. We'll catch you up again next week. Stay blessed. Ring. Amen. Bye, Facebook. Bye. Oh, Zoom. Thank you so much, FGCI family. You've been wonderful. You know, you've stayed with us almost three hours. God bless you so much because you love the Lord. So, you know, in his presence, you know, you are lost with time. Amen. You are lost with time. You know, you don't keep looking at your time, but you are lost with it. Amen. Thank you, iPhone. Randy, thank you, Sister Haiti. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Sister Nina. 
for being with us. It's a Jennifer. God bless you. I love your background. It's so great. You're looking awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Beautiful, Anisha. Sister, Sister Hetty. Oh, I love your background as well. That flower is so beautiful. God bless you so much. You look awesome. I like the way you always prepare for Sunday. God bless you so much, guys. God bless you. You, you have no idea how we feel when we see you with your camera. It makes us feel that, yes, we are having church. You know, so God bless you so much. Keep being faithful. Keep being, and then please, you know, send a link in five people as much as you can. You know, they might not come today, might not come tomorrow, but you'll be surprised that you'll be there one day and they said, oh, you know, the link you sent to me some time ago. Yeah, today I'm free. Send it back, send it to me again. I'm going to come. I've been sending people this link, you know, once in a while. They said, oh, okay, I want to come in. They come and go, they come and go. You know, but you just don't give up. Just keep sharing, keep sharing. You know, and the messages, when we post the videos or the, the, the service, you know, on a page, please send it across to people as well. That is part of evangelism. You know, we need to spread this good news. If you believe that you are hearing this season word, then it's, in, it's, it's, it's your duty to really share. Just like we say, sharing is caring. So keep sharing and bring people on board. Amen. We need to expand. Hallelujah. God bless you so much for coming. It's wonderful. Go and enjoy your fufu and your ben kwai and your, your, your kenke and your okra stew and all that. I can't wait to have mine. God bless you so much. If you've got jollof rice and chicken, please just invite. We are ready to just dine with you. And it's wonderful. Just go out in the sun and get some vitamin D and then just, just feel free. It's amazing. Amen. We love you so much. Well, Our meetings remain the same. You know, Bible studies, 12 o'clock to 1, 1 p.m. is still the same. You know, invite people as well. And then the prayer meetings from 8 to 9, we continue to pray. And it's amazing. God is doing amazing things. You will not see it or you haven't seen it. Yes, haven't heard, nor as, as it, many hearts perceive what God has in store for you. It's amazing. We know that that was Christ. That was a prophecy for Christ. But we claim it as well. Amen. Bless you. Have a wonderful week. We love you so much. Enjoy. Go and possess your possessions. Bye.